Hello everyone and welcome to my workshop. Have you ever dreamed of having a handheld home server? Well, today we're going to be taking a look at the Zimmel Blade from Ice Whale, which promises to be just that. Before we take a look at some basic specs, I just wanted to mention that this little computer is super cool. But being super cool doesn't mean that it's a great home server. At the end of the day, I'm happy that something like this exists, but what is it good at? Who is this for? This little thing is more or less ready to boot out of the box. You have to install the RAM stick. But after that's done, all you have to do is plug it into the network and the power cables and you have a home server running. I just had to go to casaos.local on my browser and I could see the web interface right away. The fact that this thing is completely plug and play is pretty awesome. But I think its simplicity comes with a cost to your personal data security though. More on that later in the video. Icewell sent me this review unit along with some accessories. So I'm marking this video as sponsored, but Icewell did not pay me to make this video. They just sent me the hardware in hopes that I would talk about it in my social media channels, including here on YouTube. Since this is a single board computer, and when we talk about single board computers, we think of Raspberry Pi, here's a size comparison between the Zimmer Blade in its original case and the Pi 5 in its official case. Unlike the Raspberry Pi, the Zimmer Blade comes with an enclosure at no additional cost, which goes with the whole theme of just being plug and play. There are two versions of the Zimmer Blade. The two core blade 3760 that retails for around $79 or the four core blade 7700 that retails for $120. One thing that is kind of weird is that if you're buying the four core version, they list three different CPUs available, but you don't really know which CPU you're going to get. I guess you should just assume that you'd be getting the worst one which is this one that I have here. Both versions come with the same integrated graphics. It is an Intel HD Graphics 500, but the clock speed on the graphics card can vary based on the CPU that you might get, which is also kind of weird. All of the Zima blades come with 32 gigabytes of onboard eMMC and pre-installed OS called Casa OS. I have more information on Casa OS later in this video. It has an upgradable RAM slot that supports up to 16 gigs of DDR3 memory. Emphasis on DDR3, which is kind of lame for a product that was launched in 2023. I.O. wise, it has two SATA ports, which has a non-standard power connector, one gigabit Ethernet, one USB 3.0 port, and of course, one of the main features of this board a PCIe Gen 2x4 connector that you can use to expand the Zima Blade's functionality. This is really cool. You could plug in a 4 port 2.5 gigabit card and turn this device into a personal firewall slash router. But how does it perform? Remember all of those people telling you not to use a Raspberry Pi as a home server? They were probably talking about the Pi 4 back then. The chip on the Zima Blade has doubles the CPU score when compared to the Pi 4. But we live in a world where the Pi 5 exists, and the CPU on the Zima Blade performs much worse than the Pi 5. Keep in mind that the Pi 5 also has PCIe expandability with a growing number of adapters available for the Pi 5. But the Zima Blade as an overall package offers a few things that the Raspberry Pi 5 doesn't. For instance, it supports hardware video decoding and it also supports virtualization and hardware pass-through, things that are not really available on the Pi 5. I don't know if I would recommend running Proxmox on the Zima Blade because of the limited onboard storage, but it is capable of doing that and you have access to up to 16 gigs of RAM, something else that is not available on the Pi 5. Not available right now at least. Another thing that the Zimo Blade has going for it is the built-in setup ports and the PCIe connector. On the Pi 5, the same setup would require at least one PCIe adapter 
and additional power source to connect your SATA drives. With all that being said, I've been running a few services on the Zuma Blade for a month now and I have not had any performance issues. It's pretty solid actually. Power consumption is not bad at all either. Without any of the drives attached and just sitting there on idle, it sips on 2 watts of power. After connecting one hard drive, power consumption jumped to 9 watts to 11 watts. But that's not the Zima Blade's fault, it's just the hard drive sucking up that juice. One good recommendation here is to set the spin down for your drive for one hour using HD Parm because it was taking way longer than an hour to spin down out of the box. Okay, so remember I told you the Zima Blade is 100% plug and play? Well, that was a little bit of a lie. The base model doesn't come with any RAM and you have to source that separately. You'd think that an old stick of 16 gigs of DDR3 memory would be cheap, but you would be wrong. There are a lot of cheap 2 packs of 8 gigs of RAM available, but the Zima Blade only has one RAM slot, so you have to get a single stick of RAM. And a single stick of 16 gigs of so dim DDR3 RAM can be pretty expensive. Unless, of course, you buy directly from Icewell, where they have this nice little bundle that includes 16 gigs of RAM and a power source for $139. So I guess that's a nice way of upselling your products. They also have this NAS kit for $160, where they include a 2 drive cage and a SATA Y cable, which is the kit that they sent me to test it out. In the package, they only include a single SATA cable, which is weird because the board has two SATA ports. Remember, this is a non-standard SATA power cable, and if you want to use both SATA ports, you have to pick up their SATA Y cable for $4. I mean, you could probably splice the power cable yourself, but it's $4. I just wish they would include the Y cable standardly in the box. The two drive cage is made of metal and it has nice rubber feet. It's solid and it looks super nice, but you can totally print something like this if you have access to a 3D printer. I love the concept of an easy to use, no frills and open source interface for your home server, but Casa OS is still a little rough around the edges. It's cool that Casa OS makes it super easy to install and run services without knowing anything about Docker containers. I was able to get Nginx Proxy Manager Trillium, which is a self-hosted notes app, and PostgreSQL running on my home server with literally just a few clicks. There are almost 100 apps on the built-in app store, but you can add any image or container from Docker Hub. I will say that in order to get a custom app running, it does require some knowledge on how Docker works though. I'm a complete noob when it comes to Docker containers and it took me a while to figure out all the correct environment variables to get Odoo running. I think it's pronounced Odoo. I've always wanted to try Odoo's inventory management tool, so I used it as a learning opportunity, but it wasn't really plug and play though. Kaz OS has this nice little hub for just launching your application pages, even if they're not a Docker container or even a service that is being hosted on the Zima Blade. One thing that I don't like about Kaz OS is that it lacks basic file sharing security features. There's no way to create user accounts and only make certain folders accessible to those users. This is kind of a deal breaker for me. This means that anyone with access to your network, like a less technically inclined significant other or your kids, could delete all of your family vacation photos by mistake. Or even worse, all of your Game of Thrones collections could go missing in the blink of an eye. So to turn my Zima Blade into a trustworthy NAS, I installed Debian first, and then I ran the install scripts for both Open Media Vault and Casa OS. Although OMV and Casa OS are OS's, they're just a collection of packages and services running on top of Debian. 
And so far, OMV and CASOS have been playing together nicely and I have not ran into any update issues. I did notice that the AIM browser terminal window in CASOS is not working, but it was working with the CASOS version that was shipped with the board. But I can always just connect through SSH if I need shell access. Remember the security issue I talked about at the beginning of the video? The Zimo Blade ships with Kaz OS pre-installed with a default login and password. There is a reason why the UK banned default passwords on IoT devices, and why Raspberry Pi warns you if you haven't changed your password. Because default passwords are a pretty big security risk, especially on a device like the Zimo Blade that is intended to host all your personal files. To make things even more confusing, when you first access the CASOS web UI, you are asked to create a username and a password. But this is only a password for the web UI. The Linux root user and the default user still have the same default password. And you've guessed it, the password is CASAOS. To add insult to injury, the default host name is also CASAOS. So right, let's recap. If a bad actor sees a device on a network that is named CASOS, there is a pretty good chance the default root password was never changed and is still CASAOS. So folks, if you get the Zimo Blade and you're using an OS that was shipped with it, please change the default password to something secure. I'll leave instructions down in the comments section on how to do it. All right, so what are my final thoughts on the Zimo Blade? I think it's a capable little computer that has no problems being used as a low power home server. And by low power, I mean power usage. It's almost plug and play, and it comes with an OS that is easy to use for folks just getting started on self-hosting. But it's no Raspberry Pi 5. All right, that's it. We're out of here.